In this lesson we're learning to rearrange formulas to make a different thing the subject. And when I say the subject, I mean in this case, we are rearranging to make x, which is also known as our variable, because it can change what number it is. We are rearranging so that x is our subject. When I say subject, I mean it is the thing on its own with everything else on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, so it's really important that what we're trying to do is move all these other things, is 8 and this 2, away from it to the other side of the equal sign. And what we have to do is if to move one thing from one side of the equal sign to the other is when we change side of the equal sign, what we do is we change the sign and we use its inverse, which also means opposite. So let's have a think. If we are doing a plus or an addition, then its opposite is subtraction. If we are doing a times, then its opposite is division. So they're the really important inverse operations we need to talk about. Okay, let's rearrange this. We want to make x the subject somehow. So to start with 8x plus 2 equals 26, we are trying to move everything away from the x. It's hard to move the 8 away first because at the moment it's stuck to it with the times. So we're going to move this thing further away from the 8x away. So if it is a plus 2 over here, what we're going to do is take 2 on each side. And this is just putting there to remind you, you don't have to do this. We're going to take 2 on each side. So if we have plus 2 take 2, it cancels it out. And on this side we're left with 8x. And on the other side of the equal sign, we will have 26 take 2, because remember we are taking 2 off. So if we've taken 2 off, we will have 8x equals 26 take 2 is 24. Okay, now we are left with, just going to focus the video, now we are left with 8x equals 24, and we need to figure out how to get rid of this little 8. And the 8 is actually multiplying by the x. So to get rid of it, remember our opposite sign of multiply is divide. So we're going to divide each side by 8. So if we said divide 8, we would be left with just x, and on this side we would have 24 divided by 8. And if we get out a calculator, we can do that and find the answer is 20. Uh, is, sorry, is 3. 24 divided by 8 is 3. So that means we have made x the subject. It is on its own. And the only thing appears on the other side of the equal sign. All right, let's try one more time. This time with a formula that only really has letters in it. It doesn't have any numbers, but the same rules apply. We are trying to make r the subject. And at the moment we have r squared, but it's not the same. Remember that r squared is equal to r times r. It's not the same as just plain old r. So we need to rearrange. And the first thing I would rearrange is this pi symbol. All right, let's get rid of it. And we know that if it's using a times over here, its opposite is divide. So we are going to firstly divide each side by pi. Divide by pi. Okay, so then on this side we will have a divided by pi is equal to, all that's left is the r squared on that side. Right, so then we've got to get this r squared to just be r. And the opposite, we'll put another one over here, the opposite of squaring something is square root. So let's have a look at that. On the calculator, if you actually have a look here, here's our square button. And our square root is just right next to it, right? So if I was to say the square root of 25, it would tell me that 5 times 5 gives me 25. So it undoes the square. So that means to get rid of this square, we need to do a square root. So if we square root each side, then we would have the square root of a divided by pi. And that's just going to leave us with r on its own. And now we have r as the subject, and then that's all complete. So remembering the important part of rearranging our formulas is moving everything away from what we want the subject to be and remembering our inverse operation.